So the gyroscope needs to get its flywheel up to a, a RPM of about 3,000 RPM for it to be able to stabilize. Uh, Michael, previously to us coming out here, was getting the oil up to temperature as well. Make sure all the hydraulic lines are working correctly. Now you also notice these two smaller wheels on these outriggers. That is in case of an accident. In case it does kind of get confused and falls over, it'll protect the body and the, and the bodywork on the side panel. As it's spooling up here, um, there it goes. It's going to back up a bit. It takes very gentle movements for it to operate correctly. You know, it, this is not something you want to get around a racetrack at a high rate of speed. Again, that was the idea, but that's not in practice how it works. Um, at higher speeds, it becomes a little more stable, as we have found out. 40, 45 miles per hour is probably its, its highest speed. It creates this, as you can hear, this incredible whine. You can hear this thing when it starts from the shop all over the museum. Now, after Michael does the demonstration, uh, we will stick around, of course, for questions. I'm sure everyone will have lots and lots of questions, so we're happy to regard Michael after he's done, after the car is turned off. All right, he's giving the thumbs up. We're gonna retract the rear wheels into the little bob bay doors. And you can see, if you get low, again, you can see it balancing there on two wheels. You can see it's very bullet nose. Even if they had more wheels, skinnier, skinnier cars by their nature are difficult. So the gyroscope is doing its job keeping it upright. See how it leans? essentially got a vertical flywheel and a gyroscope helps you sit upright. If anything acts on that, you a hydraulic ram that helps you reset the gyroscope. Sometimes with a snap, if you can see it sometimes violently, it shakes and shimmies. It took quite a bit of engineering on our part to get it to run this smoothly, even at low speeds. And while it does do well at higher speeds, again, 30, 40, 50 miles per hour, um, when the gyroscope feels an imbalance and it snaps at a higher speed, you have a more violent reaction. The idea with creating this was to make gyroscopically stabilized cars available to the masses. And they would have had to overcome quite a bit of physics and engineering because even at low speeds, it took a lot of practice for Michael to get this right. And again, Michael is one of our few pilots that does this. So it's not intuitive to drive as it would be for a normal four-wheel car or a three-wheel car. 
the moment do so down. When the gyroscope turns off in a second, it will spin for the two hours. You'll hear it hum for the two hours and you'll keep it upright. But we keep, of course, the wheels down for safety. Now, the gyroscope, the gyrorex here, again, was kind of a failure. Um, one of the other safety issues with this car is that if something did go wrong with the gyrorex, the with gyroscope inside of the car, it could exit the car at a high rate of speed. There's a lot of centrifugal force going in there. Um, but it's this car was lost to history for a while, wound up um, in the private collection of a guy in Las Vegas. He didn't know what to do with it. The gyroscope was missing. Uh, he had just three wheels that he attached to it at, just to drive it around. It was powered by just a Volkswagen engine he had found. And early YouTube, he we went on YouTube and said, does anyone know what this is? Please re reach out to me. Uh, a good friend of Lane Water Museum, Mark Breaker, who has a pretty eclectic car collection himself, actually purchased this from that gentleman in Las Vegas uh, with the plans to restore it. And by 2013, he realized that it was in way over his head. And so we like things, we like doing the things that are way over our head. So we took it off his hand. Um, and again, it was still missing its gyroscope. So we actually contacted an Italian gyroscope engineer. Uh, for those that don't know, ships out at sea use gyroscopes to stay steady. And that, uh, Italians are very known to the shipbuilding this time, to, to this day. And our gyroscope engineer friend miniaturized his technology so it would fit in the car and sent it here. And then he came over to help Michael with the restoration of the car. Um, in 2013, 2015, we finished it when? 2017? 2017, for its 50th anniversary is when we, we completed its work. So um, that's kind of it. If you guys want to ask questions instead of me asking, and, and if anyone has any major questions, I can, I can we can raise a hand here. You can come over here and just talk to us.